take a sneak peek inside of the Wells Fargo Arena and you see the back of her head. I have been told that is Meryl Streep. She's getting a little bit of a, a walk through lay of the land uh, as she is speaking tonight uh, at the DNC, night number two. We are here in Philadelphia, the roll call. This is really the big storyline uh, for part of the day today. The roll call uh, vote that would essentially seal the deal. That is set to begin next hour. Uh, the numbers are crunched. It is not enough to push Senator Bernie Sanders to the top as the nominee. And now um, uh, reps from the Sanders and Clinton campaigns are in discussions about how this historic nomination moment will unfold but uh you know these so-called bernie or bus delegates listen they're they're holding fast this is emotional for a lot of them uh as senator sanders says if anyone should be upset though he said this last night uh it is not the nominee it's him i understand that many people here in this convention hall and around the country are disappointed about the final results of the nominating process. I think it's fair to say that no one is more disappointed than I am. All right, so we wanted to hear from the, from the Bernie supporters, the Bernie uh, Sanders delegates. I have Gregory Schaefer here with me from Pittsburgh, Kate Miller from Hamburg, New York, Sanjay Patel from Satellite Beach, Florida, Tanya Ba from Philadelphia, and Brian Nowak from uh, Buffalo, New York. So welcome. Thanks for rolling by the set. I appreciate it. Um, just quick show of hands as we're looking ahead to the roll call. How many of you are saying yes to Bernie? All right, all five of you. Um, did you see what Vice President Joe Biden said earlier? Uh, let me just quote him. In part, he was walking the DNC floor today and he saw, you know, and felt he knows about the, the Bernie love here. He said, we have to show a little class and let them, you all, be frustrated for a while. It's okay. Is frustration the right word? Is it emotional? It is emotional. I think, you know, we're grieving. Uh, we had a candidate that all of us have poured countless hours or our souls into to, to getting this man elected. and. For him to not get that nomination um, in the way that that happened, uh, I think there is some disappointment in that it, it is emotional. We're grieving. Um, I love Bernie Sanders. I love that man. I can honestly tell you that. And um, You said it's emotional for you. Why? Explain. Um, well, we've been riding with Bernie for, for a year and we really believe in it. Uh, it's not about Bernie. It's about the issues. We're passionate about the issues. It's not about partisanship. It's not about anti-Hillary. and. Um, we're passionate about these issues. We want them expressed, and we want to hold whoever is the presidential nominee accountable to those issues. It's interesting you mentioned the word grieving, Tanya, you know, in the whole sort of spectrum. In the end, there is this sense of acceptance, right? The stages of grief. Shouldn't you be at acceptance by now? Well, here's the thing. I, I feel as though we don't actually have the privilege of not feeling this way. We, we have to absolutely feel this way, but at the same time, this is about issues. Greg was absolutely correct. And it is because of Bernie Sanders that the platform is as strong as it is. Um, and I'm grateful for the process that this has taken to get where we are. And uh, is there a part of me that would have absolutely celebrated Bernie Sanders as the Democratic nominee? Absolutely. Uh, and I understand that there's some painful experiences that we're going to go under. But again, privilege, there is, we, we do not have the privilege of not supporting the situation that we're in right now. I want to ask you about the support and sort of pivoting. And I'm sure you all heard Sarah Silverman. I was in there as well when she delivered this, this line. Roll it. What? Listen to that. Listen to that. Ridiculous. Kate, how do you respond to that? You're being ridiculous. Uh, I think it's understandable that to the outside, it may look ridiculous to some people, but I think it's a mistake. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that 
what we're doing here is larger than Bernie Sanders. It's larger than Hillary Clinton. It's a political revolution to try and fix our democracy, to bring our country up to the ideals that it that it that it should be standing for. But um, we, we think that, and I'm just I'm just giving the side of you know I've talked to folks in all camps, and and Brian, I mean he 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 hung in there and fought the good fight through California. It, shouldn't it be time to sort of, yes, be part of this revolution and hope Hillary Clinton takes that in with open arms, but no, she's the person, it's Bernie Sanders who's likely going to symbolically say she gets the nomination today. Shouldn't you move and support that? Are you talking about Sanders supporters overall or me as an individual? You as an individual. Me as an individual. I want to see what they have to say through the rest of the convention because, uh, like Greg said, this isn't about Bernie. It's much larger than that. Uh, we have a situation where... People are essentially denied voting rights. We have a news media that's complicit in that. We have a campaign finance system uh, and all sorts of behind the scenes trickery that leads to a situation where people like me and people like most of us on this panel, all of us on this panel, don't have a voice on a regular basis. When the cameras get turned off here at CNN, uh, the feelings that people have behind the cameras are much different than they will put, that they put on television. Well, that's precisely why I wanted to invite five of you <laughs> all on the show live to explain how you feel. Um, the question is then looking ahead to Thursday and Hillary Clinton. I mean, she will be on that stage. She will be the nominee. Will you boo her? No. 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 Boo. No. No booing? No. Booing no booing. is not appropriate. No. no chanting Bernie? You can yeah. boo ideas, we but not people. Uh, we I, will, however, be chanting Bernie, probably. I want to respond to what Sarah Silverman said, because that really hurt. I think that, you know, fighting for democracy, fighting for clean water, fighting for, you know, not bombing foreign countries, yeah. that's not ridiculous, Sarah Silverman. And that's what I heard when you said that. So, yeah. No, that's know. a good point, because um, a little while back, Barack Obama said that um, if the Republicans were in power, they would have us at war at seven countries. Now... Let's think about the countries where we're conducting drone raids and foreign intervention. We've got Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, yes. Somalia, Yemen, Libya. That seventh one isn't coming to mind. We're already in seven countries. The debate's over whether to the degree we're doing the wrong and immoral things that we're doing, not whether or not we're doing them. So the big part of the Sanders campaign is to get people more active in the political process and to widen the acceptable narrative because you know, CNN and these other national media outlets don't allow that to happen because their primary objective is to... I have no primary objective yeah, and I'm selling no merchandise, so I do take offense to yeah. that. I do. I do. And I'm sitting here because it, it matters to me to hear from all of you, to hear your perspective. And I understand it's on issues. I understand yeah. you're frustrated on issues. You want Bernie Sanders to be it. But the but DNC emails show that at least MSNBC or NBC uh, was taking marching orders from the Clinton campaign indirectly. Uh, and but despite the CNN emails, and I understand, I understand. I'm not, I'm not trying to pick a fight right. with you. I understand that Bernie Sanders has been waving the flag all along saying there is favoritism and you see the emails goes, right. and you start to get, I understand but at the end of the day how can you take all of what you feel and your passion and turn it into action once not Bernie but Hillary Clinton becomes the nominee that's my question we can turn that into action about being more honest about what's happening in this country yes we, okay we can also be and, responsible yes we're, we're this is what this revolution was about it is about us holding elected officials, religious leaders accountable. As for, they should be. As they yes. should be. And the last time I checked, this is not a volunteer situation. They are paid. They work for me. But we've forgotten that some, some way along the route. We've forgotten who they work for. And I think that the, the Sanders revolution, and that's exactly what it is, and it continues, mm -hmm. yes. has helped us to redefine how we will look at everything from the, school, the home and school voting, the, the SRC, School Reform Commission in Philadelphia, everything from the mayor. When somebody runs on something, we need to investigate, is that an actual fact? Can that actually happen? He shook it up. He and, shook it up. And that was a, that was a good thing. Who are you voting for, may I ask? I am on. voting for the Democratic nominee, and her name is Hillary Clinton. And I am part of the Bernie Sanders revolution to make sure that not only will our president be accountable, but anybody that decides to be paid out of my tax dollars will actually do what they're saying they do. Or a verbal warning, a written warning, and you're terminated. Yeah, and when I say terminated, I mean fired. Tanya, Kate, yes. Greg, Brian, and Sanjay, 
I appreciate it. Hey, thank I you. really, really do. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming by. It's thank important you. to hear all of your voices here uh, next here on CNN and historic moment tonight. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike. This is my YouTube page, Mox News. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, all right. So uh, I cut you a bouquet from the garden a couple days ago. Uh, I wanted you to, it's still around, so I thought I'd share it with you again because it still looks beautiful. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? And I think it makes, you know, makes uh, everybody's day a little bit brighter to see something so lovely. So um, Sarah Silverman says, all you Bernie or Bust people need to sell out your integrity now. Sell out the last shred of integrity that you have and vote for someone who you know is not only corrupt, but cheated on the election in order to beat out Bernie Sanders. With the help of the whole election behind the scenes process, they cheated. And you should vote for the people who cheated to beat your candidate. You should, Sarah, were you ever even on Bernie's side? I mean, how old were you the first time you sold out your integrity, Sarah? What was it? I don't even want to go there. But see, for Sarah to sell out her integrity is no big deal. She does it all the time. She says, oh, an extra million dollars and I get, and, and for this last shred of integrity that I have? No problem. I'll take that. It's not a big deal for Sarah. For those of us who cling to our honor, you know, who want to be able to hold our head high, and when we get in an argument, know that we're talking from an honorable standpoint. Know that we're, we're doing our best to defend our integrity and the integrity of everybody else who feels likewise. Unlike Sarah Silverman, who is once again selling out to the powers that be for more status quo bullshit. Um, thanks so much, Sarah. It's really nice of you to act like you're one of us and then tell us that we're being ridiculous. You, you, <laughs> we're the ones being ridiculous. I'm not a Bernie or Bus guy, but I don't see how, how these, these people who are doing their best to defend their integrity against <laughs> someone who cheated on the election. And now you're saying we're supposed to vote for a cheater. Because that's just the way the game is played. Well, Sarah, we don't play the same game as you. And to all of you protesters that are standing up and demanding that your voice be heard, I just want you to know that I am very proud of you. Uh, all of you protesters who stand up and demand your voice be heard, the police brutality protesters, the, the anti-war protesters, Everybody out there who expresses their voice, this is the tradition of America, to stand up and demand that your voice be heard. And you're all very brave. You should be proud. You should cling tightly to your integrity because it looks to me like you have a lot more of it than the average person. So... Mox News salutes you all. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Mike. This is my YouTube page, Mox News. Um, I need your help, okay? Uh, we did 500,000 video views last week. We got three donations. We've done, in the last seven days, we've done 700,000 YouTube video views. And I've gotten like, two donations, one for $10 and one for $5. And I thank you people very much. It's very, very kind of you to, to, to do that. Uh, I am running out of hard drive space. We used a half a terabyte of hard drive space last week. We will use another half a terabyte of hard drive space this week. That means I need to order hard drive this week. I really should order two. Um, so they cost $90 each. So please, if you can, put a little something in my bowl to help Mox News continue to move forward on this project. If you appreciate this project, 
if you think this is a worthy project, please put something in my bowl so that I can be making happen the things I need to be making happen in order to keep this moving forward. Okay? Uh, and I don't, and I don't say that because I, I love begging for <laughs> being able to do what I need to do. I say it because it's what has to be said. I said it last week. I got three donations. I said it this week. I've gotten one for ten dollars and one for five dollars, and I appreciate it very much. It doesn't buy a hard drive. It. I need more help please I'm not complaining I'm just making sure you all know exactly what's happening okay so thanks for tuning in my name is Mike it's my YouTube page Mox News I hope you think of it as your YouTube page also stay cool one of these days this war is gonna end till that day Compassion stirred the Buddha to send his monks out into the community. Sworn to chastity and poverty, they wandered the roads, bringing the Buddha's teachings into the world. Go forth, monks, for the happiness of the many, out of compassion for the world. There are beings whose eyes have little dust on them, who will perish if they do not hear the teaching. But if they hear the teaching, they will gain liberation. The monks exist by begging. We think of begging as kind of a bad thing. Begging in this tradition is a good thing. It's a sign of spiritual purity. You're not allowed to beg tomorrow's lunch today. Only today's lunch. Then you can't eat from noon until dawn the next day. Then you have to go out and get another lunch. And then in exchange for lunch, you give a lecture. Unless they say, we don't want to hear about it, then you don't. But that's the only thing you, but that forces you to interact with the lay community. And if you're not serving them, if you're not doing something useful for them, they won't put anything in your bowl and that will be the end of your community.